From the Thebaid of Egypt to the caves and cells of Mount Athos and even beyond to the vast forests of northern Russia, these are the chronicles of the desert. Among the early female monastics, we know that some lived proto-monastic lives in villages along the edge of the desert, while others lived in more secure monastic communities. But of those who fled into the desert to be alone with God, despite the great risk, we know very little. Yet they did exist. Such a one was discovered by the priest monk Silas in the 6th century while venturing out into the harsh Judean wilderness from the Faran Monastery. As he walked along a narrow path into the Wadi Kelt, he briefly passed through the Valley of the Shadow before heading up toward the region of the cave-dwelling hermits. Father Silas wanted to bring bread and lentils to a holy man that he knew and also to receive his blessing but he lost his way in the glaring sun and intense heat. Overwhelmed by thirst, he prayed to God for mercy. Suddenly, he saw footprints, small enough to be those of a woman or even a child. He followed them until they disappeared. As he looked further ahead, he saw the figure of a small person entering a cave. And so he drew near to the entrance of the cave and called out, Bless me, Father. No one responded. And so once again he called out, Bless me, Father. Still no response. And so Father Silas entered the cave, only to see a monk sitting in shadow and stillness. The monk stood up, and they bowed to each other. Please offer a prayer, said the unknown monk with a soft childlike voice. Forgive me, but could you offer the prayer? replied Father Silas. No, you should lead us in prayer, for you are a priest, said the unknown monk. Father Silas attempted to hide the fact that he was a priest, but the monk replied, You are a priest, Father. Please do not hide this but rather pray for us. Father Silas prayed, thinking all along within himself, could this be a eunuch or a woman in the desert? After the prayer, the monk spoke again. Why do you have so many questions about me, Father? I do not, replied Father Silas. Of course you do. You're thinking, could this be a eunuch or a woman in the desert? Trembling at this, Father Silas bowed his face down to the earth. Would you like to know my story, Father? I will tell it to you, only if you promise not to speak of me until I no longer live. Yes, this promise I make. I will tell no one about you while you are still alive. She then began to tell the story of her life. She was born to a noble and wealthy family of Constantinople. She lived in wealth and was well educated. As she was coming of age, she was being prepared for marriage to a nobleman. And yet, she hungered for God. She had learned about God, but she desired to know Him through experience. So, she prayed to be free of marriage so that she could dwell in solitude and stillness in order to draw near to him through unceasing prayer. When her father finally arranged the marriage, she told him that she had to first fulfill her vow to God to worship at the sacred sites in Jerusalem while still a virgin. Her father protested, but to no avail. And so he gave her 3,000 coins to use at her discretion and a retinue of servants and guards to accompany her on the journey. After worshipping at the Holy Sepulchre and other sacred sites, 
She went into the desert and distributed money to the Holy Fathers. At the Lavra of the Egyptians, she found three monks living there. She saw among the monks an old man who wore sackcloth. This monk can fulfill my wish, she thought, if only God wills it. So she returned to Jerusalem, and after some days, she wrote a letter to her parents, saying, I offer myself to the God of all things. Search not for me, for I am leaving to go where God will lead. Then, as her retinue neared Jaffa Gate in Jerusalem, and was preparing to head home, she asked one of the guards, Please, give me the benefit to personally slip away for a moment, to once again worship at Golgotha and the Holy Sepulchre. Not without some hassle did she make her way free of the servants and guards, but once alone she set forth straight away on the road to Jericho to find the monk wearing sackcloth. When he saw her, surprised, he said, What can this be about? I seek only God and hope to be clothed with the holy habit, she replied. That is my only desire. Ah, but how do I know that you have not come as a temptation for the monks? Bowing down and weeping before him, and giving him all that remained of her coins, she replied, Holy Father, my only wish is that you honor me with the holy habit and the holy scriptures. The monk discerned properly her hunger for God, and gave her a worn habit and his own Bible. She then stayed with him for the day before preparing to leave. Where will you go, my child? Abba, wherever your prayers will lead me. She cast all her cares upon the Lord and gave herself over fully to the desert. She prayed to be hidden from sight and through the Abba's prayers was led to the cave where she now lives. She had lived in this cave in complete asceticism and Hezekiah for 28 years, rarely catching sight of any human figure and speaking to no one until now. After hearing her story, Father Silas noticed that her face gave off flashes of light, sparks, and spiritual embers that burned much like her very own heart for God. Trembling, Father Silas bowed and offered her some bread, but she refused. If I share in the food with which you brought, he who has fed me for all these years will no longer do so. Father Silas glanced once again at the radiance of her face, her youth well preserved. But the beauty he was seeing went beyond human nature to a spiritual essence that transcends mere words. He thought for a moment about how his own burning thirst, with which he had arrived, had now ceased. Be of good cheer, Father, she said, for you will not thirst again until you reach the door of your cell. Please do not leave this place, he begged, so that I may come and be blessed by you again. And so, Father Silas headed down again to the path and followed it back to his cell, noticing that just as she had promised, he did not thirst along the way, in spite of the scorching heat. Some time went by, and Father Silas once again retraced his steps to that cave. But having entered, found her no longer there. Once again she went hiding herself away in perfect stillness. He returned home, giving glory to God and thinking within himself, Blessed are they who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. <laughs>